d'un comité consultatif pour, la, pour faire le budget. Par contre, je pense qu'aujourd'hui, euh, la présentation, je demande vraiment aux membres du, des bureaux du gouverneur de nous écouter et vraiment, euh, on, je pense qu'on fait un bon cas pour justement ne pas augmenter les frais de scolarité l'année prochaine. Euh, moi, ce n'est pas la première fois que vous me voyez, je, je fais cette présentation-là à chaque année et s'il vous plaît, cette année, si on pourrait bloquer la hausse, ça serait merveilleux. Donc, je commence. Euh, donc, these are the facts. Um, we say it all the time, Ontario uh, is the province with the highest tuition fees in Canada, but with the new framework that was introduced by the, the government of Ontario Liberals, um, we are guaranteed to keep the highest tuition fees at least for the next four years, unless, of course, another province decides to have a significant or drastic increase in tuition fees, but this is a problem. We're not finding a solution with the new framework that the, that the government proposed. Um, Now, many will say that the 30% off tuition grant is part of the solution to this problem, but only two out of nine students in Ontario receive this grant. Furthermore, I'm not sure what happened at Queen's Park when the amount for this grant was calculated, but the average tuition fees are far beyond $5,400, so that is not actually representative of 30% of our tuition fees. Just an FYI. Furthermore, while this grant was put in place, roughly $1.20 was clawed back from the Ontario Grants and Scholarships Program, Uh, and what I mean by that is uh, nine other grants and scholarships program, incluant la bourse pour, uh, pour étudier en français, were cut. So this is uh, definitely a problem. Furthermore, this is just basically to give some context. I often hear, um, you know, folks who maybe studied in the 70s and the 80s that, you know, our tuition fees have, have increased with inflation. That is false, and I will uh, get back to that a little bit later in the presentation. Uh, but just to compare, in 1980, approximately 80% of Ontario University's operational budgets were publicly funded. Today, it's roughly 50%. And last year, at the University of Ottawa, and I know this because I was voting on tuition fees and I saw the budget, uh, only roughly 54% of our budget was publicly funded. And our largest stakeholders are students. We subsidize uh, the second biggest portion of the budget. And actually, I think that that kind of echoes with some of the stickers that we see in this room. Where's our voice? We're the largest stakeholder on this campus, and I think that we deserve more than just consultation. I think it's time that we have decision-making power, not only at this Board of Governors, but also on the Treasury Finance Committee. Um, that leaves many students in between the crack. And this graph, graph here actually shows that uh, the province hasn't been spending any more money uh, on our grants and scholarships program, despite the fact that our tuition fees have been increasing year after year. Uh, and this here, actually, this graph is the one I mentioned earlier. It shows, um, it's basically a graph that highlights how much faster our tuition fees have been uh, rising in comparison with inflation. So if our tuition fees had actually been rising with inflation, it would have been that yellow line over there. There you go. <laughs> um, so yeah. So this is a, a little part of the presentation we've taken from the uh, FA Bureau, the Professors Union, uh, their, uh, the Financial Analysis Committee. One of the things that we've seen in the uh, one of the things that we've seen and we've discussed this at length with the university as well uh, is the idea of the surpluses. And so what we're seeing is that this the, the University of Ottawa's budget is currently not in a crisis situation that we. That We're kind of getting the feeling that it isn't. Um, there has been a consistent and concerted uh, budget surpluses uh, from year to year in the in the University of Ottawa operating budgets. Now, a lot of times we hear that this budget is this this money has been reallocated and is going to other places. But the point is that there is a budget surplus at the end of the day, despite the fact that you know, despite where it's going. What our argument is that this should be going directly back into the uh, into the funds that that help subsidize the education that's happening on this campus. Okay, that, that, that being said, that budget surplus is what should be uh, funding our education and not the two that being offloaded onto students. So again, uh, that's kind of uh, just what's given here. Uh, in, in, the, in, in addition to that, again, as, as mentioned here, we are looking at a 5.5% uh, $5.5 million dollar projected surplus for this year's this uh, this year's budget 2012-2013. We'll go over some more numbers and then we'll come back to our, our recommendations for the board meeting. Okay, so I guess thank you, Mr. Chair, for giving you some time to present today. Um, something that we we've modified our presentation as perhaps Mark Bell and Chris did recognize from our uh, consultation, but uh, 
taking into account the percent increase that was recently added to Government Ontario. What we did is we took the numbers, and this is a so the numbers of, this is a undergraduate tuition fee this year, so the student was first year this year, in 2012 in the Faculty of Arts, which shows Faculty of Arts because they have a BIU of one. Uh, basic in, 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 uh, the amount of subsidy that's received from the Department of uh, Ontario for so, the they have one, so the lowest is the easiest uh, comparison to do. Um, what we did here is we added all that up year after year. So someone that started this year in September would see an increase of this much every single year, uh, based on a 3% increase of their tuition fees. And then this part is the incidental fees, which are indexed to duration, uh, at a roughly 2.1% CPI rate, which is kind of about what we've experienced the last couple of years. So that's a little bit of an estimation. But what we see in the end is, first of all, a cost of about $30,000, not including living expenses or anything like that, that is the University of Ottawa if we start this year. Uh, and an increase overall of uh, almost $530, $525 uh, over your four years of study. Now, people, uh, oh yeah, tuition. Now, you might not consider that to be that much. You might not consider that to be that much, but for students, $525, it's a little bit of a sum of a little bit of a little bit of a little bit of a little bit on moins, euh, peut-être trois mois, ça dépend si parce que les étudiants peuvent garder l'argent pour un peu plus longtemps. C'est presque une année complète de livre de recueillir des textes pour des cours, euh, pour quelqu'un en sciences humaines, mais pour quelqu'un en sciences, c'est probablement pas même une année, c'est peut-être peut une année ou même deux, trois cours, euh, c'est bon, très cher. C'est aussi euh, presque le coût d'une de, de, euh, année com au complet de transportation pour les étudiants. Alors pensez-vous, euh, qu'est-ce que vous pouvez penser faire pour une année pour votre voiture pour déplacer Ça c'est pour l'étudiant, 530 dollars, c'est le U-Pass plus le pass, euh, laisser passe pour l'été. Alors c'est beaucoup d'argent, c'est quelque chose qu'on met dans notre budget. Et d'abord ça, c'est extra, c'est simplement, on voit que ça va limiter les gens aux tests à la fin des années. Alors c'est quelque chose à prendre en considération, pour nous c'est quelque chose, un nombre qui n'est pas insignifiant. Si on voit comme 3%, ça semble que c'est pas beaucoup, 3% c'est bon de taxe, mais à, notre, à nos frais de scolarité, c'est un gros fardeau pour les étudiants et ça cause des problèmes au long terme. Um, so, our recommendation is to, to decide to come up with at the end of uh, this, and I'm sure Kessad will have their own that we've talked about, and, and there's more to come as well, um, is uh, first is to petition the government for solvency relief and uh, with the relationship that the pension is involved, and I encourage that uh, the university continues to strongly petition the government for that to happen. I know that there's been a talk around that. Uh, the Federation strongly opposes any fee increases uh, that we don't want any financial burden, collective financial burden at the university being offhand, offloaded on individual students, because that's what's been happening the last, uh, well, the, the whole time that I've been here. Um, and one other solution, which I know we talk about a lot, is local and joint lobbying between the university administration and uh, and the student federations, to get that, and the Student Federation University of Ottawa, uh, about the severe, the grave underfunding of our public institutions at the provincial and national level. Uh, through established channels. And so for the university, that can also mean uh, working with the COU uh, and being a leader on Ontario post secondary institutions uh, to make their voice <coughs> at the provincial level. Yeah. Um, so, finally, I'll just give a little bit more context, particularly at the University of Ottawa, to describe the situation of the students at the moment. I'm certain that some of you have heard about in the media the fact that there are more and more students qui prennent des antidépresseurs, mais aussi le fait qu'il y a une hausse très importante dans l'usage de la banque alimentaire, comme mis en place la PEO en 2007. D'ailleurs, avant tout, je pense que, il y a un petit drapeau rouge, c'est un peu inquiétant le fait que les étudiants financent un dollar par session pour avoir une banque alimentaire sur le campus. On ne devrait pas avoir besoin de banque alimentaire, point à l'année. Mais ce qui est encore plus inquiétant, c'est que l'année dernière, en 2012, La banque alimentaire sur le campus a été la deuxième banque alimentaire la plus visitée dans la région d'Ottawa et on ne sert que des étudiants. Donc là, quand je vous dis, s'il vous plaît, les membres du bureau des gouverneurs bloquons la hausse cette année, c'est vraiment parce que ça a un impact très négatif sur la vie étudiante. Et comme vous l'avez vu euh, sur les calculs, 525 pour un étudiant, c'est beaucoup, c'est de l'épicerie et c'est justement euh, soit une, encore une hausse dans l'usage de la banque alimentaire l'année prochaine. Nos étagères sont vides, on a le droit de manger tout comme on a le droit d'étudier, donc je vous encourage encore une fois euh, de non seulement euh, 
ne pas augmenter les frais de scolarité pour l'année prochaine, mais aussi de jouer un rôle. Vous avez un rôle clé à jouer sur le Conseil ontarien des universités. On a besoin de votre appui. Les étudiants, c'est clair qu'on n'appuie pas une, une hausse des frais de scolarité, mais les, les administrations universitaires, vous avez un rôle à jouer au Conseil ontarien des universités. Vous pouvez voter contre les hausses des frais de scolarité, contre le cadre qui a été présenté par la province, et aussi voter en faveur d'augmenter le financement des universités et des collèges en Ontario. Donc, ce n'est pas seulement un appel pour bloquer la hausse, mais c'est aussi un appel pour que l'Université d'Ottawa ait un peu de leadership au sein du gouvernement provincial. And just to, to add one, one more uh, sort of final comments on what we can do here at the University of Ottawa, in particular re regarding the context uh, that students at the university face. One of the biggest things is we, we hear a lot of times from, from our administration and from other, other members of the community that, well, we're increasing our fees, but we're increasing our investment in, in financial aid as well and, and bursaries and scholarships. One of the things we've noticed is that many, many, many students, those with a great financial need, do fall through the cracks. They're not able to access the bursaries and scholarships and financial aid system uh, as, as a whole that is available. Um, and so what we are saying is we really need to, in addition to not raising the fees, really take a cri critical look at the system of financial aid and bursaries and scholarships that we have on this campus and make sure that those students are not slipping through the cracks and that they are, they are getting that. As part of the, uh, the you know, the request we have for the university to really take a leadership role among the universities and colleges, post secondary institutions in Canada, is to set a five year plan uh, as, 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 well, at the same time as the five year plan for the budget that I set, uh, to, regardless of the MTCU framework, create a budget that is sustainable into the future in order to better anticipate our budgets and our, and our financial situation coming up. What that means is we do not have to raise the fees uh, according to whatever maximum the framework sets. What we're requesting is that the University of Ottawa not raise the fees and set a plan five years in advance down the road of what's going to be happening. And so that's uh, that's one of that's kind of our final final uh, line there of really it is this comes down to a matter of leadership amongst the, the board of governors and the University of Ottawa to really prioritize students and say we we recognize that financial uh, sorry the financial subsidies from the uh, Ministry of uh, Training College and University from the government of Ontario have been decreasing over the last 20 30 years. What have we done about that in the meantime? We've offloaded that cost onto students. What can we do now? There's still time even now to be able to turn around and, and recognize that and stop that from further continuing further. What it's become right now, it seems like a tit for tat kind of uh, sort of thing between universities saying, okay, I'm raising my fees this much, I'm gonna yeah, so then everybody else has to raise their fees as well. It's not how it has to be. We can really take that role here at the University of Ottawa of saying, no, we're not gonna raise our fees and we're challenging all the other universities to do the same. And in fact, challenging the minister of the, the provincial and federal governments to recognize their mistake and start investing back in our social uh, services and our, uh, you know, primarily our, our education sector. So thank you very much for uh, giving us the time to present here, and uh, we'd, uh, we'd really like to uh, encourage you to can take into consideration what the students at the undergraduate and graduate levels have to say. Thank you. Okay, okay, well, okay, so uh, I, I want to make sure to the Secretariat that every member of the board gets a copy tomorrow of your presentation. Thank you very much. Very good. Merci. Uh,